Well, we just heard New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman explain and defend his advocacy against the current Israeli government and its judicial reforms. Now, as we mentioned in that interview, we did speak early with the Likud parliament member and former ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, who wrote in an open letter that Friedman's writings are undermined and damaged both Israel and the Israel-U.S. relationship. Here's that full conversation with Danone. Knesset member Danny Danone, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having the me. Rundown. Now, uh, Tom Friedman, over the years in the New York Times, has certainly uh, spoken out on Israel. He's criticized certainly many governments that you've been part of. Why now did you decide to write or respond to him with this uh, open letter, uh, criticizing some of his criticisms of uh, the current government? I respect Mr. Friedman. I respect his passion for Israel. I think it's genuine. He really cares about the future of Israel. But I think what happened in the last few weeks, I think Mr. Friedman crossed the line. You know, it's okay to criticize Israel. We welcome it. But what he did, I think he crossed the line when he actually called President Biden not to meet our prime minister, when he actually spoke about the normality of the government. And I told him in my letter, how dare you? How can you actually tell the majority of Israelis, 2.5 million Israelis, who elected democratically this government, to tell them, I don't accept your views because my view is different than yours. That's not democracy. So yes, he should be involved. He should think about constructive ways to improve what's happening here, the unity of our people. I, I accept it and I respect it. But to come and to tell us that uh, we have a government that it's not legitimate, that's not legitimate. But he, what his argument is that uh, this current government is endangering the democracy of Israel. Even though it may have been democratically elected, it's endangering the future of democracy in Israel and other democratic uh, governments. That, I'm saying that is, that is his argument. So democracy works only one way. When his views are in power, it's legitimate, and we should accept uh, ideas like the Oslo Accord, disengagement, or other governments that he supported those ideas, even though some of them made crucial mistakes. But when you have a national right-wing government, it's not legitimate. Well, he's criticizing specific policies. Uh, in this case, specifically, uh, the, the question of the judicial reform. He's been critical of, uh, uh, of previous government's attitudes, or this one's toward the Palestinians, but this is what he says. He says this government is crossing a red line line. So uh, he can tell us what he think, but to tell the U.S. president not to work with this government or not to promote a peace deal. I was very involved in, in drafting the Abraham Accord with the Emirates. I know how sensitive the process is. And to see now uh, is uh, pieces in the New York Times where he actually tells the Saudis and the U.S. administration, don't trust the Israelis, don't do anything with them, they will not be your ally, I think that's way, way too much. Do you think that's actually influencing this, that he has that much influence with, for example, the Saudi government, that it could impact in that way? I don't know, but I would expect that anyone who cares about Israel and wants to improve the situation in the Middle East, the stability in the Middle East, not to actually say those uh, claims because that's not respectful. Uh, well, but he is a journalist. He has the freedom of expression to say it. I mean, you are an elected official. There are limitations into what you can express. Uh, he is a columnist with freedom of expression. We both, we both have no limitations. And you know, I, I, I speak my mind freely uh, in all my position, also when I was the ambassador to the UN for five years. But uh, when I look at his intentions, and I believe he wants to do good for Israel. So if that is intention, he's making a mistake. And that's what I told him. We are in the eve of Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish holiday. We should all reflect about the, what we did this year. And I think he's doing a, a mistake. He will not be able to influence because many people do not respect this approach, even if he wants to influence what's happening here. Well, you, you charge with him with undermining the U.S.-Israel relationship. Uh, he might reply that it's th this government, or certainly members of your government that are undermining the U.S.-Israel relationship. And yet you're not, certainly some of the harsh comments coming from some members of the government, Minister Ben Vera, members of his party, for example, you're not writing open letters to the own members of government saying you are under, you're hurting our relationship 
relations with the U.S. No, I criticize them when, when I have to do it. Uh, and you know, when you look at the letter I wrote, and you can see it online, I was very careful with the language I chose. I was very respectful, because I think that the language he should choose when he actually criticizes Israel. And I tell it again, it's legitimate to criticize Israel, especially if you care about the future of the people here in Israel. But don't give ammunition to our enemies. Don't blame our democracy and our government for not being legitimate, because we are a legitimate government. Well, I, he's questioning the legitimacy of some of its actions. I'm not. He has said this government has crossed the red line. I'm not sure he could say it's illegitimate, but he said he's, I, 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 he's, he's criticizing legitimacy, I, from what I understand, of its of uh, some of its specific actions in this how, case. How can he call the president of the United States not to meet with our prime minister? That, that's not done. Well, it is done. I mean, why, why, why that, is that, that that's not done? done because and he maybe explain why prime that's minister not done. Minister Netanyahu was elected by the people of Israel, uh, and you should respect, even if you don't support the prime minister or you don't think he's doing the right things, but you should respect him. When a leader of another country is coming to the U.S. and, and meets with President Biden, you don't look at what his government is saying and what happened. I can give you a list of dozens of uh, leaders who, we, who met with President Biden, and I'm sure Mr. Friedman is not happy with their policy as well. But uh, when you speak about Israel, you know, you should respect our democracy. And we elected Netanyahu to go to the U.S. next week to represent us uh, at the U.N. Uh, and to represent us when he meets with President Biden. Right. Well, let's talk about that meeting with President Biden. Prior to that, the prime minister says he's going to try to, or reports that he's trying to do some kind of compromise proposal, uh, even a unilateral one for the judicial reforms. But in the end of the day, we, we haven't seen that. Why, why not? Why not some, some and, and was it just a ploy, as some of his critics argue, to soften the meeting uh, of, uh, or soften relations with President Biden ahead of their meeting? Well, you know, I was uh, urging the, some kind of a compromise for the last few months. And I still think that is the right thing for Israel. We need unity. Right. Our enemies, uh, they look at us and, and they see the division and, and the hatred and it's dangerous for our security. So I think Prime Minister Netanyahu, he, he understands those issues. He called for a compromise. And, and I believe it's still possible. Maybe it will not happen before his visit to the U.S., but it can happen when he comes back. Right. Uh, given the weight of the judicial reforms compared to some of the other issues that are on the table facing this government. You've mentioned them, maybe a possible normalization of ties with uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, security issues, including the unrest this has caused in the in the uh, Israel Defense Forces. Is this not sure, Are those not considerations that should be taken for the government to even soften or delay the judicial reforms? Well, I, I think the Prime Minister Netanyahu is aware of those issues, of those threats. That I, I think he's trying to get to find the middle ground. And I'm still optimistic about that. I, I, I support the ideas of the reform, not the way it was executed. And, and I think we have to learn the lessons, and we need to work really hard to, to reach some kind of a compromise. I don't think we can compromise with everybody. For example, uh, Mr. Lapid, I don't think we can get into an understanding with him. But there are other parts of the opposition that we hopefully can reach an understanding with. And if you want more great content like that from I-24 News, just hit the subscribe button. It's as easy as that.